Uh, oh. Yes, Yusef Kanjo and uh, me, Yoshi Nishiaki. We are very pleased to uh, present uh, our recent research at uh, the Deria Cave in Syria. This cave is a uh, <clears throat> large cave with a long history of human occupations, starting from the lower Paleolithic until the Iron Age, in fact. But uh, we will focus on its uh, Natufian occupations at the late Epipaleolithic in this lecture. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will make a, a brief introduction to the uh, location of this cave and the research history of the Derie. This cave is uh, situated about 60 kilometers north of Aleppo, and it is uh, located in the Mediterranean woodland in the northern Levant, actually at the, at the northern end of the Levant. And uh, its uh, latitude is about 650 meters, uh, facing down to the, to the northern edge of the uh, Rift Valley. So this cave <coughs> was discovered in 1987 by uh, during a site reconnaissance survey conducted by Takeru Akazawa and Sultan Muhaisen. And they conducted extensive excavations in this cave at the at the end of this long tunnel-like cave, as I will explain later. But their excavations uh, focused on the Neanderthal occupation areas, actually, which uh, uh, resulted in the discovery of a series of Neanderthal skeletons along with uh, Middle Paleolithic uh, materials. That is the uh, first stage of the excavation of this cave, and <clears throat> which, uh, as I said, focused on the Neanderthal remains. But uh, a sounding made in 1990 already revealed the presence of Natufian occupations in this cave. And in the second stage of the excavations of this cave, starting from 2003 and ending at the, in the spring of March in 2011, when the political turmoil of Syria uh, uh, <clears throat> started. And then the, in the second stage of uh, the excavations of this cave, we tried to enlarge our excavation areas to cover the entire uh, cave to define the complete occupational history of this cave. It's actually, the research of the Natufian is uh, uh, included in this uh, second research program. Okay, this is a <coughs> general view of the, the Deria cave. It is uh, <coughs> around the Wadi de Deria facing uh, to, the, to the north. And as you see in this photo and the uh, schematic stratigraphy, shown in this slide. And this is a tunnel, tunnel-like cave, which has two openings, one facing the wadi and the other one um, facing to the sky. Okay. This is a general view of the inside of the cave, uh, looking from the entrance to the, to the chimney at the end. It's a quite large cave, uh, occupying an area of 60 meters by 15 to 20 meters <coughs> approximately. This is another schematic stratigraphy of this cave. Actually, the, 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 almost the entire area of this cave was uh, occupied during the Paleolithic and the Epipaleolithic period. 
the well-known Neanderthal occupations were discovered at the end of this cave, uh, just below the chimney area, as see in this photo. Actually, in the chimney area was <coughs> mostly was uh, actually occupied almost uh, only during the Middle Paleolithic. The, the, the other occupational tra traces came from the area of the entrance of the cave, starting from the Lower Paleolithic, Middle Paleolithic, till the Epipaleolithic and the Iron Age. Our talk will be, uh, in this lecture will focus on the entrance area. Ah, before we go to the entrance area, I wanted to show the big discovery of Neanderthal remains in the in the chimney area. We discovered at least three almost complete Neanderthal skeletons and uh, other well isolated finds of the Neanderthal remains at the at the end of this cave in the chimney area. Okay, then <clears throat> this is a general plan of the cave. Uh, the chimney area I, I just mentioned is shown in the in the in, in red, which was uh, excavated during a period of 1989 to 2009. And the yellow areas <coughs> shown in this slide were the areas we excavated in the second second stage of the campaign at escape between 2003 and 2011. And there is one small square shown in red in the entrance area. This is the sounding uh, square we made in 1990, which uh, revealed the presence of Natufian occupations in the entrance area. And then in the second stage of our excavations, we our research program included the investigation of the Natufian occupations in the entrance area. Okay, this is uh, another. This is a schematic stratigraphy of the entrance area of this cave. The occupation started with the lower Paleolithic of the Yabrutian phase. And then we have a thick middle Paleolithic uh, occupation layers, which probably covers all the phases of the Levantine Mysterium from the early, middle, and late phases. Then there is a obvious stratigraphic gap between the middle Paleolithic and the Epipaleolithic. The Epipaleolithic Natufian came directly after the Middle Paleolithic in this sequence. And on top, we have Iron Age uh, layers, <coughs> which, which are not the subject of this talk. Right. <coughs> then we move on to discuss the Natufian occupations of this cave. One of the important questions of the Natufian in the Northern Levant is uh, whether it uh, appeared as a result of diffusion from the, 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 the Natufian in the, from the south to the north, or the Natufian phenomena in the north was a local uh, phenomenon. The slide <coughs> we are looking at in this slide in this uh, in this slide is a, a traditional view uh, presented more than two decades ago by Opa Bari Yosef. According to that, to the then known model, Natufian homeland was situated in the south, and it became an expansion to the north during the late uh, Natufian. <clears throat> Actually, this is a 
this is a model presented more than two decades ago, but uh, I, I don't I don't think much new data uh, came out to discuss this uh, traditional view because of the uh, suspension of uh, intensive field work in Syria uh, for more than a decade. And then <laughs> the Dederia cave uh, excavated until uh, 2011 is, uh, can, can add important uh, data to discuss the distribution of the Natupium and the, the, the the process of the emergence of this cultural phenomena in the northern Levant. Actually, practically, <clears throat> the Natupian phenomena in the northern Levant has been discussed with data from Abu Huraira, which <clears throat> covered the, the a period of the late Natupian, dated from about 13,000, not BC, but BP. The data from Abu Freire is very important to understand the uh, Natufian phenomena in the north, uh, but it uh, is located in a particular environmental setting, which is uh, the Euphrates steppe, <clears throat> which is uh, different from the the environmental setting of the most of the Natufian sites along the Mediterranean coast in the Levant. And then the Dederia cave data is uh, new from the Mediterranean Utrand in the northern Levant. It, uh, sequence, its cultural sequence included the late uh, Natufian equivalent to the Abu Freira occupation. Therefore, uh, we can, <clears throat> therefore, with the data from the Deria cave, we can uh, discuss the Natufian phenomena uh, from different environmental settings in the north, both from the steppe and the Mediterranean Ultra. Okay. This is a general view of our uh, Natufian excavations. At the entrance of this cave. Yeah, what uh, is most important for the Natufian occupation of this cave is the, the discovery of a series of beautiful stone structures, which are semi subterranean buildings cut into cut in to the slope. <coughs> Actually, we discovered a total of six Natufian structures which are overlapped to each other. As, as you see, the scale of this uh, photo is six meters, <clears throat> six meters wide. Uh, we identified at least six structures. We numbered the structures from the from those we discovered first, defined from number one to number six. These stone structures were made in order from the the the, the backside of the cave first. Actually, number three building was the oldest, and number one building is the, is the youngest in this sequence. Then when we see the uh, stratigraphy of these uh, stone structures, we are able to define at least three architectural phases. Phase one is the oldest, represented by the biggest structure of number three and uh, number five as well. <coughs> and then the phase two is in the middle between the, the first and the latest phases. The latest phases 
the latest phase, phase three, is uh, is the best represented uh, one <coughs> for the Natufian occupations in this area, including the uh, complete uh, semi-subterranean building designated as number one building. Okay, <clears throat> then we have uh, made 29 radiocarbon dating for the structures of this cave. As you see here, we, we can clearly define at least two phases. The youngest one, phase three, is about 13,000 years ago. It's, it's very consistent. The dating is very consistent, including construction six, one, and four. And uh, there is an older phase defined as phase two, which is about 14,200 years ago. And unfortunately, at this stage of the research, we have no radiocarbon dating for phase one. But this is clearly, evidently, this is clearly uh, earlier than phase two. But most recently, we, we got a radiocarbon date for phase one as well, and I will mention it later. So <clears throat> the, the Natufian occupations at the Deria cave uh, cover the quite long sequence from the early Natufian to the late Natufian. We, we do not know yet, uh, still point, the beginning of the Natufian occupation and the cave started, but say it uh, should be within the early, early Natufian. And the Natufian occupation at scape ended at the at around 13,000 BP, just at the beginning of the Younger Dryas. And this uh, period is uh, <coughs> uh, almost uh, the same period as the Abu Furayra Natufian, page three. Okay, I, I, I will uh, introduce the discovery of uh, the Natufian occupations at the sky. The best preserved is, uh, is the phase three structure number one, and dated from 13,000 years ago. This is a burnt, this is a burnt building, <coughs> one of the rare ones, as far as I know, for the Natufian period in the Levant. As you see, we have a lot of charcoals and ash inside the building. Now, what is important is uh, the uh, remains of charcoals. The distribution of the charcoals show us a very good idea about the, about the architectural, the, the, the structure of the architecture, including roof structures. As you see in the photo, <coughs> in one of the photos, there, there, there were some standing posts and uh, a trace of uh, collapsed roof beams as well. Yeah, like this. <coughs> yeah, these red lines probably show collapsed roof beams and these uh, <coughs> to 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 uh, charcoals beams uh, uh, probably represent standing posts along the wall and then we have uh, also <coughs> quite good uh, pres preserved features on the floors including the pit hearth and the post hall in a pit with the stones at the base okay so this is a <clears throat> this is a view of uh, the structure one of the Natufian period at the Deria cave. We located hearth in this part, and the 
entrance at this part facing to the entrance of the cave. As, <coughs> oops, as you see here, there are a series of holes on the floors. Actually, they were, we identified more than 20 or 30 small uh, pits on the floor. And they help us to reconstruct the, the architecture itself. Yeah, as uh, I said, there are plenty of uh, holes on the floor, and we measured the depth and the diameter of those holes. And we identified a small group of post holes like this, about 20 centimeters deep and 20, meter, 20 centimeters in diameter at maximum. And there is another group of larger post holes, up to 45 centimeters in diameter. And I think these two groups of holes uh, were, uh, played an important role to uh, support the roof. Their distributions are uh, like this. There are uh, big holes in front and smaller ones along the, 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 the stone wall. Yeah, this uh, distribution pattern is quite similar to that we already know up to Aim Malaha in the, in the South Levant and other sites of the Natubian homeland. Then we reconstructed this structure in this way. Three large post holes in front and there was an entrance in between. Yeah, the, the structure was made on the slope. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I put a figure of a dog here because we discovered some dog bones and the coprolites of dog. <clears throat> then that is the architecture. And uh, I, I will show material remains from this cave. First of all, lithic industries. That is uh, the... <clears throat> The industry of the Dederia cave is obviously based on blade and bladelet production. Most of the cores and most of the debitus and detached tools were related to blade production. This is uh, in contrast with the lithic industry of Abu Huleira in the same period, which is uh, said to have been characterized by flake production. These are some of the representative retouched tools of the late Natufian in at the Deli cave. The most common are uh, geometrics, including lunettes and uh, rare triangles and others. Yeah, one of the characteristic features of the Dederina Tufin is the rare occurrence of decorative art or art object. This is one of the rare ones, which is a <coughs> bone handle for sickles, which has <coughs> some lines in paint, black. Yeah, as uh, I said, the Natufian of the Terie cave included the occupation of the Ari Natufian, which is known to have uh, a rich uh, art industry in the South Levant. But that this but at uh, the Deli cave, the art uh, representation is very uh, limited. The heavy tools 
grinding and ground stone tools. These, uh, this sort of uh, stone tools was not uncommon at this cave, but when compared with uh, the ground stones of the Southern Levant, we note the absence of deep mortars made of stone. The our mortars is, uh, as shown here, it's very uh, shallow and probably uh, used for uh, processing ochres because of the uh, remains of ochres still visible on the surface. And the shell remains, <coughs> the most common shell remains are occupied by dentalium. And as far as we understand, most of them are, came from the Mediterranean Sea, not, not too far from the Cape, about 80 kilometers to the, to the, the west. But interestingly, we have uh, uh, dentarium from the Red Sea as well, as shown in red circles here, which came from more than 800 kilometers uh, from the south. We also have uh, freshwater shells, but they are rare. <clears throat> The cave is situated about uh, three kilometers from the Afrin River. So it was uh, probably, it was, uh, it, it must have been easy to have uh, freshwater shells, but uh, they occurred very rarely at this cave. The bone industries, bone industries are also simple. It uh, consists of uh, pointed tools and some bees with uh, incisions. The pointed uh, <coughs> bone tools include bipoints with midpoint incisions. They, they have uh, tiny incisions at the at the mid of uh, the shaft, which <coughs> they are probably used for, I don't know actually, but for fish hooks or uh, hooks for crawlers. We also discovered a human bone from these uh, burnt structures, which is a mandible fragment of a young boy we did not find any associated structures to to bury this mandible fragment, but it was discovered along the stone wall together with other daily use tools, including shikru price and other stone tools. <laughs> Okay, animal remains, <clears throat> as uh, expected from the environmental setting of this cave, the most of the animal bones were occupied by woodland species. And there is a rare, uh, there are rare gazelle <coughs> specimens. The gazelles are uh, one of the most popular uh, animal games in the in the Natufian period, but in this uh, cave at Dederie, they are rare. And another thing we, yeah, another thing we, we note in the animal assemblage is that large game, the evidence of large game hunting, including large wild ox and wild pigs. Anyway, the, the, the fauna remains of the Dederia Cape shows an adaptation to the woodland environment rather than the steppe, like the Abu Huraira 
のサイト。Plant remains. We <coughs> collected abundant remains from the burnt building to, to understand plant use in this period. <coughs> the most abundant nuts represented by pistachios, carrots, and almonds. And what's important is the, the occurrences of cereals like iron corn and barley. They are not relatively common at this scale, but they, they are, I, 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 we would say they are common enough to characterize the, the exploitation of plants in this scale. And there are some policies like lentils and peas also. This, this, is the, <coughs> this one shows a uh, relative uh, proportion of the main categories of uh, plant remains at uh, the DDK in comparison with uh, the remains identified at Abu Freire. Obviously, uh, the Deria cave. Uh, the, the, the abundant use, exploitation of nuts is uh, striking in contrast to the case at uh, Abu Freire. And <clears throat> almost also important is, as uh, I said, the, the plant remains of the Daria cave included uh, Cereal grains, uh, mostly represented by emma and iron corn, which are not uh, very popular at a later example. Okay. <clears throat> then I have uh, made an overview of what we found at uh, the Deria Cave. Then what is important is uh, we have uh, both early and late phases of the Natufian. I, when I mentioned radiocarbon dates for the sequence of this cave, I, I said there was no radiocarbon dating for the oldest phase, phase one, but uh, only recently we got one radiocarbon date, which is shown here. It's about say between 12,000 and 12,500 BE, hmm? BP, BC. So the phase one, which is considered the oldest Natufian at this cave, is not too old uh, from the phase two early Natufian. But anyway, these uh, radiocarbon dates demonstrate there was an uh, occupation of early Natufian in this cave. So when we compare the archaeological materials between early and late phases of this cave, we see a clear, the clear uh, uh, cultural evolution during this period. Oop. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for example, as uh, I said, the architecture in the early uh, phase is larger than the architecture in the late phase. This is, uh, this is a phenomenon already known to us with the evidence of the Southern Levantine Natufian. So probably the same trend in the architectural tradition uh, occurred at the Derie at the northern end of the Levant as well. And then <clears throat> it is known that the lunette size decreased through time in the, in the southern Levant as demonstrated by Deborah Olsbecki a long time ago shown in the slide to the to the left and uh, so in, in the northern levant this uh, type of uh, uh, 
this exchange has not been demonstrated, but with the with the new data from the Maria cave, we may say there was also a, a similar trend in the in the decrease of Rivnet site in the northern Levant as well. Yeah. And also it is known that the frequency of HER1 retouch uh, decreased from the Ari to the late to the final uh, Natufian in the South Levant. And also <clears throat> we there was no comparable data for this kind of exchange in the northern Levant, but we obtained a comparable data at the Deria Cape, as you see here in the in the early phase. The hair one retouch was more common, and then it sharply decreased through time to the late Natufian. And probably the same trend occurred in the in the south and the north Levant. Okay, then <clears throat> yeah, okay. We 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 came back to the uh, first slide as uh, I showed at the beginning of this talk. Then the traditional view about two two decades ago was that the Arena Tufian emerged in the south and made it to expansion to the north in the late Tufian. That this picture should, should be revised with uh, the new data. Then the new data is uh, not uh, so <coughs> not so rich actually. But, 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 uh, and the Dederia Cave <coughs> data is uh, one of the most important addition to the, the, the Natufian phenomena in the nose, which uh, we believe started in the early uh, Natufian. Therefore, the Natufian phenomena in the nose uh, cannot be explained entirely from a diffusion model from the south. But uh, I said uh, there was the early Natufian in the nose at the Deria Cape, but it was not entirely the same as the Natufian in the south. Um, like, uh, for example, the dentarian bees in the in the south uh, Natufian during the early phase in particular, the dentarian bees are cut quite long as, as seen as uh, we see in the photo. But the dentarium bees at the Deria cave was were always quite short from the beginning in the early Natufian. And the size did not change from the early to the late Natufian. And in the in the lithic industries we, we do not have uh, uh, peaks like this or in the ground stone assemblages we do not have deep mortars uh, typical of the South Natufi. And also, <clears throat> I mentioned the reality of art objects at the Deria Cave. We do, we do not have such a, a range of beautiful art objects, as you know, in the South. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, this is uh, the last uh, slide of this uh, talk. So the Natufian phenomena in the north was probably not the result of the dispersal from the southern homeland. But the uh, <coughs> southern homeland, the people were already there during the Natufian, the early Natufian period, who experienced uh, comparable uh, adaptations um, in material uh, cultural uh, traditions. And then their uh, cultural processes 
uh, took place uh, almost in tandem with the South. I mean, the Natufian cultural assemblages of the Deria Cape are not the same as what we know in the South, but they changed through time almost uh, in tandem with the South, which uh, demonstrates the uh, steady uh, communication with the North and the South. So far, the Dederia Cave, the evidence of the Dederia Cave is the northernmost evidence of the Natufian in the Levant. But we, uh, we <coughs> still, but, but when more field investigations in, in the north uh, develop, we will certainly discover similar early Natufian comparable to the Dederia cave. For example, at Nahar el Homo, discovered in the 1970s along the Euphrates Valley, but they showed uh, heroin retouch remains of the large size, which uh, can be early Natufian in the north. And also, uh, there is another site the Kozak Shemari on the Euphrates, which we excavated some 30 years ago. But they also produced Heruan retouch uh, of the early Natufian type in large size. And also, actually, until yesterday, I was in southeast to Turkey to investigate the, the Epipaleolithic and the early Neolithic period. And we also, we, we found similar uh, lunettes of a large size in Southeast Anatolia as well. So the, the Natukian phenomena in the North is uh, simply, uh, there are, there are too, 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 too many things that we do not know well, simply due to the, the lack of sufficient investigations. Yeah, when the research in Southeast Turkey, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, is uh, developed, we will have more uh, comparable uh, materials um, to the Dederi uh, discovery. Um, we will uh, understand the Natufian phenomena in the nose better in, compa in comparison with that of the South. Ah. Yes, that is the, this is the end of the of our talk, the slide. And then, yeah, Yusuf Kanju, I think he, he will summarize our talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nishiaki, and thank you for all. I will speak uh, in Arabic, but I prefer to speak about the slide. I will not repeat all the slide, but just uh, a few slides to explain very well. Okay, الآن أنا أتحدث في اللغة العربية عن موقع الديدرية في الفترة النطوفية. طبعا كهف الديدرية مشهور جدا بسبب اكتشاف الهياكل العظمية للأطفال النيندرتال تم اكتشاف ثلاث أطفال أطفال في هذا الكهف لكن اليوم المحاضرة هي حول المكتشفات في الفترة النطوفية طبعا أعتقد هذه هي المرة الأولى التي يكون هناك محاضرة باللغة العربية عن الثقافة النطوفية في كهف الديدرية 
الكهف واضح جدا هو يشرف على احد الوديان وانتهاء الوصول اليه ليس بالامر السهل هذا هو كهف الديدريه كهف الديدريه هو كما ذكر البروفيسور نشاكي عباره عن نفق يعني كهف كبير جدا مائل بالدرجه الاولى ليس سهلا السكن فيه طبعا هو بعمق حوالي 60 متر بعرض حوالي وارتفاع حوالي 20 الى 15 متر نلاحظ في هذه الصوره كيف تم الفترات التاريخيه اين كانت وفي اي جزء يقسم الكهف بشكل عام الى ثلاثه اقسام القسم الخلفي القسم الاوسط والقسم القسم الامامي او المدخل من كهف الديدريه طبعا التنقيبات التنقيبات بشكل رئيسي جرت في القسم الخلفي وحديثا بدات التنقيبات في القسم الامامي وهو وفي القسم الامامي فقط كان هناك الثقافه النطوفيه او المنشات النطوفيه التي تحدث عنها البروفيسور النشياكي. هذه مخطط للكهف طبعا كما ذكرت نحن يهمنا في هذه المحاضره فقط هي التنقيبات التي جرت في مقدمه الكهف وهي جرت ما بين عام 2003 الى 2011. هذه الفترة التي عملت فيها أنا مع البحثة فقط هنا في هذه الـ 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 هذا سلايد مهم جدا حتى نرى الفترات أو, الـ الـ أو المراحل الـ الـ الكرونولوجية للكهف في مقدمة الكهف نلاحظ أن هناك ميدل باليوليثيك الثقافه المسيوريه ولكن بعدها تاتي الفتره النطوفيه او الابي باليوليثيك هذه الفتره اللي جاءت يعني مباشره على الميدل باليوليثيك طبعا لدينا فتره قصيره من عصر الحديث اذا هذا السلايد هو السؤال المهم الذي تحدث عنه البروفيسور نشياكي في كل المحاضره نحن نعلم أن الثقافة النطوفية مركزها في جنوب بلاد الشام وخاصة المرحلة القديمة من الثقافة النطوفية لكن المرحلة في مرحلة ما النطوفية الحديثة انتشرت ووصلت إلى نهر الفرات هذه النظرية السائدة كانت إذا الأصل في جنوب بلاد الشام وامتدت إلى نهر الفرات لكن لكن احنا الاكتشافات الحديثه هي في كهف الديدريه، كهف الديدريه خارج النطوفيه القديمه، خارج المرحله النطوفيه الحديثه. اذا السؤال الذي يعني عملنا على الاجابه هو العلاقه مع الحضاره الثقافه النطوفيه في جنوب بلاد الشام. هل الثقافه هل هي انتشرت من جنوب بلاد الشام ووصلت الى الديدريه ام هي ثقافه محليه ظهرت في كهف الديدريه، كان يعني كل المحاضره يصب في هذا السؤال، ما هي العلاقه بين المكتشفات النطوفيه في كهف الديدريه وفي جنوب بلاد الشام وفي منطقه الفرات في بشكل خاص في كهف في موقع ابو هريره، طبعا هنا في هذا السلايد هي موقع الديدريه وهناك يعني اجزاء من ال او بعض الثقافه النطوفيه التي ظهرت في في ابو هريره. هذا هو الاكتشاف الرئيسي كما ذكر البروفيسور نشياكي ان هناك منشات معماريه يعني جميله جدا اقل ما يقال عنها هي ظاهره واضحه جدا هي نصف تحت الارض مبنيه من نصف تحت الارض مبنيه من الحجاره الطبيعيه من الكتل الحجريه الصخريه الطبيعيه منظر اخر نلاحظ لكن في هذا السلايد في هذا السلايد نلاحظ ان هناك ليست منشاه معماريه واحده وانما هناك ست منشات معماريه هي مرقمه من واحد الى سته حسب الاكتشاف وليس حسب القدم. طبعا بناء على المكتشفات المعماريه تم تقسيم الفتره النطوفيه في كهف التيدريه الى ثلاث مراحل المرحله الاولى المرحله الثانيه والمرحله الثالثه. طبعا لدينا هناك كميه هائله من عينات الكربون التي تم تم تحليلها في جامعه طوكيو واثبتت وجود ثلاث مرحلتين رئيسيتين على الاقل المرحله القديمه والمرحله الحديثه المرحله القديمه من الثقافه النطوفيه هو حوالي 14000 سنه والمرحله الحديثه حوالي 13000 سنه 
طبعا هذا بناء على عينات تحليل كربون 14 كما ذكرنا بناء على تحليل المنشات المعماريه لدينا ثلاث مش... ثلاث مراحل من الاستيطان هذه ال... هذه ال... هذا الشكل يعني رائع جدا وقت الاكتشاف المنشات نلاحظ ال... ال... الاشياء بمحلها مثل ما كما تركت في الفتره النطوفيه نلاحظ ان المنشاه الاخيره التي تم الاستيطان فيها موجود فيها الجدران وموجود فيها الخشب المحروق كما هو في تلك الفتره طبعا لدينا لدينا دلائل على الارضيات ولدينا دلائل على السقف اللي كان مصنوع منه لانه الخشب احترق وبقي بقي في مكانه نلاحظ في هذه السلايد ذكر البروفيسور نشياكي انه لدينا عدد عده اماكن لل لل اماكن الاعمده، اماكن الاعمده كانت واضحه جدا تم ترتيب عنها واكتشاف عدد كبير منها وهي كانت على نوعين من من الاعمده، نوع صغير جدا صغير الى نوع حد ما ونوع من ارضيات الاعمده، اماكن الاعمده هو نوع كبير، هذا الكلام يمكن هذه الاماكن الاعمده الكبيره وهنا اماكن الاعمده الصغيره في هذا السلايد. وهذا شيء هذا يعني اماكن الاعمده ساعدت على انه نعيد انشاء ونعيد بناء المنشات النطوفيه كما كانت او نتصور اعاده بناء لتخيلها كما كانت نلاحظ هنا صوره الكلب لانه وجدت العديد من عظام الكلب في ضمن المنشاه طبعا هناك اشياء فنيه كما هذا المنجل الصغير هو منجل أو خنجر طبعا مزين هي دليل على الأشياء الفنية الموجودة طبعا العديد من الشيلز عثرت في المكان وهي أتت من البحر الأبيض المتوسط والبعض منها أتت من البحر الأحمر أيضا وهو دليل على وجود التبادل مع الحضارة النطفية طبعا لدينا الصناعات العظمية المدببة لدينا فقط فك بشري لطفل انسان واحد طبعا ليس في مكان دفن وانما في مكان خارج دفن طبعا كان اكثر شيء اكلوه في تلك الفتره من النباتات هي اللوزيات كالفستق بشكل رئيسي لكن كان هناك قليل جدا يعني من 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 الحبوب وبعض البقوليات طبعا هنا باختصار شديد لدينا مرحلتين من البناء مرحلة الحديثة ومرحلة القديمة من المنشآت المعمارية طبعا أكثر شيء كان موجود هي الهلاليات الصوانيات الهلاليات موجودة في كهف الديدرية وهو هذا بذلك مشابه لما هو في الجنوب طبعا باختصار شديد حتى أنهي هو الإجابة على السؤال هل هي هي انتشار من الجنوب أو هي حضارة محلية حسب تفسير البروفيسور نشياكي الثقافة النطوفية كانت موازية للثقافة النطوفية الموجودة في جنوب بلاد الشام هي موازية لها في نفس الفترة هناك تشابه هناك تبادل لكن يبدو من المحتمل طبعا لسنا متأكدين أن هناك أن ليس انتشار من الجنوب نحو الشمال لأنه ظهرت في نفس الفترة طبعا المكتشفات ما تزال قليلة في في شمال بلاد الشام لا فقط هناك اكتشافات طبعا ذكر البروفيسور نشياكي أيضا في جنوب تركيا طبعا في تل القرامل الذي يبعد 30 كيلو متر جنوب كافة الديدرية وجدت أيضا ثقافة موازية لما هو موجود في الديدرية في نفس الفترة حوالي 12 إلى 14 ألف سنة قبل الميلاد ولكن تبقى المكتشفات قليلة أو نادرة مقارنة بالمكتشفات والتركيبات التي حدثت في جنوب بلاد الشام إذا نعتقد في السنوات القادمة ومع زيادة الاكتشافات سيوضح العلاقة ما بين النطوف الشمالي والنطوف الجنوبي يفضل البروفيسور نشياكي تسمية أنه هذه المظهر الشمالي من الثقافة النطوفية الموجودة في كافة الديدرية Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, I maybe a, a, a little bit speak too much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf, and thank you, Yoshi. Um, thank you all the participants in the in this lecture. Um, 
we want to remind our next lecture, Artemis, next, next month. Next, next this, lecture in September will be on uh, the Italian region in Cyprus and we'll send um, a round of, of uh, invitations with the link with Anna Satrag. Sorry, can you all hear me? Yeah, okay, thank you all and see you next month. Thank you all, thank you both. Domo. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, Professor Nishaki. Thank you, Dr. Kunju. All the best, both. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.